G'day, g'day, this is Ruthie and um, I want to talk to you today about a couple of spiritual problems you may encounter in your walk of faith. That's right, um, it is a fact that we don't like to dwell on but we don't want to be ignoramuses and totally ignore it either because it could totally throw our battle strategy for living righteous lives that we do have an adversary. Whether you call him the evil inclination or the devil doesn't really matter. He's definitely out there and it's his job to make us think that uh, not obeying God is a jolly good idea. He was up to his tricks in the Garden of Eden, and of course that's where we've got a lot of our, well, all of our problems from actually, but um, I want to tell you about a couple of his techniques for slowing you down on your life of faith. That's right. He's got two major tactics, and the first one most people know about, but the second one is every bit as deadly, so I'm going to tell you about it, so when he tries it on you, it doesn't do him one bit of good. Okay, the first technique is um, you need to imagine for this object lesson that a life of obedience to God is like a vehicle. It can get you places. Being obedient to God can get you to extraordinary places. So for the sake of this ex thought experiment, well, no, actually it isn't an experiment. It is absolutely the truth. I know it because I've learned it through life. Um, think of your life of faith as a vehicle that you want to take you certain places. Now, there are two ways to stop a vehicle, and this is true in real life and in the spiritual realm. Most people know that you can stop a vehicle by hitting the brake. We all know that, right? Did you know you can stop a vehicle with the accelerator? Hmm, I bet you're going, no, you can't. Well, yes, you can. If you get into the car and you hit the accelerator to the floor until you lose all control of the car and you're hooning down the road and you can no longer control the car and then boom, you fly into a tree and bang, that's the end of you, that's the end of the car. Oh boy, will your car have stopped. So as you can see, um, the brake is actually the least dangerous way of stopping a car but of course we don't want our spiritual walk to be stopped by anything so why am I telling you this because I have found in life that um, people who are sincerely trying to get the will of God in their life they know about Satan's put his foot on the brake technique they know all about that one Satan will try and stop them doing what's right and they don't tend to fall for that trick if they're really devout that is sort of one we expect and we prepare for it. So when there's this voice in your head say, oh, don't pray to God. He doesn't listen. We're like, hmm, that's just Satan trying to stop me doing good things. And then he's like, oh, you know, maybe you should tell a lie. And you can be like, hmm, that's Satan trying to stop me being a person of truth. That's not hard to deal with, right? Well, the accelerator technique, though, oh, this is where many, many, many people actually end up destroying their lives if the devil cannot stop you from doing what is right he will say to you why don't you do some more that's right why don't you do some more why don't you do some more Ooh, what a what a useless person you are you could be reading your bible a lot more you know the other day my sister she works at a very physically demanding job and she was so tired she was not reading her bible and um she usually reads it every day, but she said to the Lord, look, I'm so tired at the moment. I'm sorry. I just can't do it. And she said she immediately heard this mean little voice in her head saying, I do mind very much and that's not acceptable. And she said, she said to that voice, I know that's not God. And she ignored it and got straight into bed. Why? Well, the um, stick your foot on the brake technique isn't very effective with my family. We tend to be quite impassioned and whatever we do, we tend to do with a lot of um, um, enthusiasm and it just doesn't really work for us but the stick the foot on the accelerator and tell us no you must do more you must give more you must pray more you must read more you must be more thoughtful no 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 why you don't need to have fun why are you doing that is that spiritual no why are you buying that do you really need it blah 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 that bossy voice that just will break you if you listen to it which takes all the joy out of life that is the devil trying to get his foot on your spiritual accelerator and his aim is exactly the same as when he puts it on the brake only of 
course, what he's really trying to do is destroy you by having you drive into the side of a wall. And believe me, I've done this in my life. I've done this in my life. I have been trying to live for God so hard and then that voice gets inside my head and it pushes and pushes and pushes and pushes me till I break and then guess what happens? I don't want to do anything for God. So it's a very effective technique. What I'm saying is this. Do your best to listen to the voice of God and seek what he wants in your life. And this is essential because God knows what you can handle and God knows what you can't handle and God is not interested in breaking you and God is not interested in turning your relationship with him into this big competition where he's like oh my kid over there they're doing so much better than you they're being so much more righteous now God is not like that God is like I love my kids I want to spend time with my kids and when they get close to me I'm happy and he's good he's like a good father and he doesn't want you getting broken and depressed and destroyed so please 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 do not allow that voice in your head to come into your life and destroy you when you are walking towards being close to God and say well if you really cared you do more and more and more and more it says in the Bible that it is pointless to get up really early in the morning and go to bed late striving because God gives his beloved rest and that is usually translated to mean that um, God provides for our material needs but through the course of life I have found it to mean that he cares about our spiritual and emotional needs too and it's good to read the Bible, it's good to pray, it's good to give money, it's good to be there for people in hard times. But remember that you must be balanced and you must take time for yourself because life is a long, hopefully, a long, long race. And we want to run it to the conclusion for God. We don't want to start off great guns for um, God in our youth and then get so exhausted that we give up no we want to run all the way life is a marathon not a sprint so when someone's pushing you to go harder than is actually good for you ask God for wisdom and pray 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 that he will guide you and he will show you how fast he wants you to run and how much he wants you to do if you're sincerely looking for him you're going to find him and remember that um let peace be your guide. It says in the Bible, let peace be your guide. Listen to your gut. If your gut is saying, that's not a good path for me at the moment, even if it seems like the most amazing, righteous thing to do, listen to your gut because your gut is where your soul is. And as I tell you continuously, your soul is your Wi-Fi connection to God. Make sure the router is turned on and you are checking in regularly with your spiritual Google to get the correct information. Love you lots. Bye-bye.